Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Path. Now, the last episode we left off on, we had just helped Marion with her bee problem. We just got the hive, I guess, uh, put, I guess put back into one of those little wooden uh, beehives. So now, I guess we collect our reward, or whatever else I guess she wants to give us for helping her. I don't know. But anyway, guys, let's see what this episode holds for us. Just sit back and enjoy. All right. <clears throat> I'm thankful for the darkness, as I know I'm blushing. Huh, <sighs> that you can. Marion's guard appears to have gone down, and she freely teases me about my new relationship. She's been seeming more chipper lately. Do I have to thank you for that? Do I have you to thank for that? Me? I doubt it, but I'll gladly take credit for it. I see. Jessie's got a fiery personality. A temper ta and temper, you know. Be careful with her and yourself. I assure you, I have nothing but good intentions towards your sister. Oh, I know, but she's not unlike these bees. One second she's harmless, the next she's on a buzzing rampage. I furrow my brow. My face must be a giveaway for concern. She's not aggressive. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Just, well, maybe it's just me as her sister talking. She and I can be a bit combative at times. But truth be told, I dare say she would call herself trapped in her own life, her own town, her own home. Marion cracks a tiny smile. Malcolm, let me tell you something. When Jessie was maybe eight or nine years old, she tried to bake a pie all on her own. She picked all the currants and refused any help. Mind you, I stood watching the doorway, because I didn't trust her near the fire. Sure enough, she dropped a dish towel in the open flame, and thought it, she nearly burned the house down. She was running around like a mad hen. I was awful for laughing at her so, but I put the small fire out of my skirt and just kept teasing her. She was humiliated and felt horrible. She packed a bag in the middle of the night and took off. Father was shook with fear when we awoke and she wasn't at breakfast. We ran around the homestead calling out for her. Father found her sitting by the water's edge, all alone, crying. All she'd packed was a sack of sugar and two pots of butter. I picture poor Jessie, alone and frightened as a child. I had no idea she ever doubted herself so, even if she was only a wee lass. I've never known Jessie to feel... <clears throat> sorry. I've never known Jessie to feel so insecure about anything, let alone her own abilities. That's not what it was, exactly. She didn't care about the pie. She was worried she'd ruined her, her own home. That was all we had then, except each other. Home. My point is, Jessie still knows where her home is. Often, I think she believes it's changed so much that she needs to move away from it, that it's been disturbed somehow, that maybe she's responsible for those changes. I wonder about how each of these girls are so tied to their home, tightly enough that none has dared leave. They've never had need to, need to I suppose. But now Jessie's threatening every once of Marion's domesticality. Domest, domesticality? What the hell is domesticality? <laughs> every ounce of Marion's domesticity, her ideal family. To lose Jessie would be like losing a piece of herself, the life and family she's built. Marion glances over at the buzzing bees, trying to adapt to their new environment. She believes that she needs to follow a new path. Exactly. Marion removes her sticky gloves and helps me off with mine, tossing them into a barrel at the side of the barn. And you worry about her leaving. All the time. With only sugar and butter. <laughs> Something like that, yes. Except that Jessie is no longer the little lass we grew up with. Anything but, I try to assure her Ma I try to assure Marion of her sister's happiness and of her maturity. Jessie's an adult now, Marion. As I say the words aloud, it hits me that I need to accept that. Jessie's choices have to be her own, whether I want them to or not. I have to trust her as much as I keep telling her I do. If I don't, I'll lose her. Don't you want to come see her perform at the pub? That's her at her happiest, I know. I'm sure she'd love to have you there. There's a sound next to me, I think it's one of my little kitties being silly. Maybe one day. I've seen her practice plenty at home. Always had a song and a dance show ready for us to watch after dinner. She's always wanted to be the center of attention. Let me save it right there. 
I do worry about her lifestyle, yes. But, Malcolm, please know that I don't worry about you and her. As a couple, if that's where things are going with you. Not that it's any of my business. Marion fumbles with the strings on her dress. But? I've noticed Jesse's personality. How much it's changed. Everything is becoming more dramatic, more emotional. <laughs> That's always been my role. I'm taken aback to see Jesse so overwhelmed. I hesitate to ask what she knows, or what she thinks she knows. Oh, well, you must know now how Jesse used to have such a crush on you, Malcolm. She cried so hard when she heard you were going to war, she almost followed you out of town. My heart skips a beat. Jesse hadn't indicated her feelings were that strong. I may have heard something to that effect. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell her I told you that. She'd kill me. But I think that's one of the reasons she got into this whole flapper thing. Marion looks distraught again, and I only want to calm her. Marion, it's all right. I already know she explained it to me. I don't believe I'm the reason, but I do believe her mind is often elsewhere. You have to forgive me. My thoughts just go off into the worst direction sometimes. I fret more about pain and tragedy than I do focusing on the positive things in front of my face. I stand awkwardly in the yard. Jessie is here now, and I should be grateful. I know she's always had a fire in her, determination in every bone. She's a fighter. She'll be alright, and she's her sister. A scrappy fighter is in you, too, is in you too, Marion. Oh dear, I hope not. It's got her into trouble before. Don't you remember when she beat on when she beat on Michael McAllister after he made fun of my dress? I don't think another bully picked on any of us after that. She may look small, but that girl can pack quite the punch. I certainly don't mention the strength it takes to survive a bullet. Dear Lord, what I have got what have what have I gotten myself into with this girl? Malcolm, I will tell you outright something Jessie shared with me. Now, she didn't tell me not to say anything to you, so I don't think she'd mind if I told you. She may have even told you this herself. I'm not one for gossip, Marion. It's not gossip if it's true, and Jessie doesn't lie. I just want, for your heart's sake, to know that she is sincere. Jessie is very much in love with you, Malcolm. My heart skips again, for a different reason. Jessie is sharing these feelings with others, people important to her. I know both women to be sincere, but this is re so reassuring, so spectacular to hear. She isn't stringing you along. I can honestly tell you she's likely as overwhelmed as you may be. Thank you for telling me, Marion. I can, without being out of line, assure you that Jessie is loved by me as well. I hope I am able to reciprocate in kind. I am pleased, shocked, and honored all at once to have her affections being directed in my way. But, that being said, I have one last fear. Please, no, Marion. Let it. Let this. Let end the same. Bah. Please, no, Marion. Let's end this evening on a high note, shall we? He stays. I worry Jesse's decision making. Not in matters of the heart, mind you, but. Well, plainly stated, her body isn't going to look like that forever. Once she ages, she'll never have a career. I think he had a faint huff and looked to my right. There is a form approaching in the shadows. Oh, oh hell! Ah, oh, shit. A distinctly Jesse shaped form. She's fuming. Her anger is showing by way of a growing muzzle and bared teeth. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Save it right here. Perfect place to save it, actually. Marion is still talking, oblivious to her sister's surprise arrival. Jesse, uh, she could always find other avenues, other careers. Well, of course, but... Jesse is snarling. If she doesn't change back to human, she needs to hide. Fast. I make warning eyes her way, but she scowls at me. She would attack her own sister. Would she? I'm going to stand up for Jesse. Then tell me, Marion. What do you see her sister doing here? Settling down? Having a family? She would tell you she's not the domestic type. You said as much yourself. I think it to be right. I think it to be the right thing to speak up on behalf of Jesse. My, my, how the decision fails. She ought to rethink those decisions as well, Malcolm. Romance and escapism are not proper ways to live your life. But are you now saying that her being with me is a poor decision? Oh shit! Jesse growls, and I want to join her. Marion has every right to be worried, but not to complain or plan Jesse's life for her. The elder sister only raises her voice. No, of course not. 
She just needs to. It's the final straw. Jesse's about to explode, I think, on my feet. Marion, I forgot something. I grab Marion, twirl her around, and push her into the barn. As the door closes, Jesse rams into me. What are you doing, Jesse? Calm down, now! She has to stop telling me what to do. Malcolm, what's wrong? Let me out of my own barn! Marion bangs on the door, and I stay pressed against it, whispering in my angriest tone to Jesse. Get out of here! Your sister can't see you like this right now! It won't help anything. Malcolm, this is ridiculous. Let me out! Jesse shoots a withering look, then takes off running. I open the door, and Marion bursts out. What on earth? I forgot, I, uh... I look out into the field and see a familiar sight. Well, you see, I got you a surprise. There she is! Is that... a dog? Yes, it's, um, well, belongs to Murdoch. I'm just, well, borrowing it for the night. Borrowing it? I didn't know you could do that. How interesting. Look at how helpful she is. It's wrangling our herd. That's the idea. Is it... wearing a dress? Oh, no, no. I think it's some type of neckerchief. <laughs> we watch the cows pour themselves into the paddock under Jesse's lead. Marion walks over to look up to lock the latch. Here, doggy. What's her name, Malcolm? Oh, um, Lady. Lady, how sweet. Come here, good dog. Dog is gonna fucking bite you. Instead of obeying the command, though, Lady takes off running again. Oh, she's just heading home for the night. Good girl! How odd! I didn't know they could be so well trained these days. Aye aye, you can train a dog to do most anything. Well, what a lovely surprise, Malcolm. Thank you. Anytime. I imagine we can arrange for its services every now and then. Just marvelous. Well, it's getting very late. I imagine Jesse will be home soon. If we'd like to stay, to say hello. I think I'll start my travels back home. I'm bound to run into her on the path. Very well. And I thank you immensely for the help today. You're welcome to as much honey as you can eat. Let me save that right there. Happy to be of assistance. No! Stop it with the bee puns! Hazel's like, what the fuck are you doing? With Marion comfortably settled, a piece returns to the night. I load up Hazel in her pack in preparation to return home. She starts to bulk. What's gotten into you now? I smell it before I see it. Jesse comes back from the field, looking disheveled and smelling manure. Ah! Marion's not going to be happy when she finds out she'll be needing to repair those gloves again. Serves her right. I laugh, relieved that Jesse's gloves were the only thing torn to shreds tonight. Things could have gone so much worse, but they didn't. All that practice has been paying off. Whew! <sighs> Pardon me. Great job out there. I thought it was a good save. I promised her sister you'd be back nightly to corral the to corral the cattle. What? I can't do that. Then you owe me. Then you owe your sister a herding dog. Malcolm, you scoundrel! What are we going to do? S Despite your horrid sense, Jesse, I am going to kiss you. I plant a hard kiss. I plant a hard kiss on her lips, which luckily still tastes of honey. It reminds me of the bees. She seems to use the energy of the moment to hide the last traces of her canine outburst. You need controlling, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm only half joking. I don't. I'm fine. I just... You're fooling yourself. I saw the anger within you and outside of you. I just have to take it easy and not listen to the dumb things my sister says about me behind my back. She's only worried, as usual. That's not going to change. Even if I disagree with her, too. It's not worth getting so riled about. It's an opinion. It's many opinions. The point is, unless you want your family knowing about your new identity, or your sister to end up with stitches, you have to stay calm. Jessie rolls her eyes at me. It's only Marion I haven't told. Grace already knows. You can't hide anything from that girl. 
Now she's been chasing me all over the farm, trying to get me to bite her. Thinks it'll turn her into a werewolf, too. <laughs> he burst out laughing. It's all too unreal at this point. Then just tell Marion. It will ease her mind, at least in one respect. And give her one million more things to worry about. No, she knows how tough you are now. She realizes you're unstoppable. Unstoppable, huh? Yes, he comes in close and kisses me again. Are you going to stop me from doing this? My fingers reach the buttons of my shirt. By the second button, I place my hand on hers. Yes, you smell terrible. Yes, he snarls at me. And maybe someone needs to give me a bath. Ha! She has the uncanny ability to send me orbiting. I don't think we could get away with that tonight, could we? Suddenly, I'm ready to abandon Hazel and jump into the freezing lock with my girlfriend. Unfortunately, Jessie comes to her senses first. Probably not, but there's always tomorrow. First thing in the morning. <laughs> Marion will, Marion will be at church. Agnes will be, Agnes will be with her. Grace will be fishing. And your boyfriend, the heathen, will draw you the hottest bath you've ever had. I get one more kiss before parting. I can't wait. And then they banged. I mean, no, that's going to happen in the morning, probably. And a scene that I cannot show. Because the algorithm will destroy me. In the morning, I sprint to Jesse's house. <laughs> Damn, that is, the, that is the sprint of a man who's about to get laid. In the morning, I sprint to Jesse's house. Before I can knock on the door, it swings open. Uh, uh, uh. Why are you still wearing the shit-covered dress? <laughs> it's like a miracle. I can't get too close. My sisters mentioned how horrible I smell. I told them that dog tripped me on, tripped me on my walk home. This poor imaginary dog, the most hated mongrel in the village. Hmm, my future? Hardly. You'd be the most beloved. Come inside. I told Marion I couldn't go to church because I broke a toe dancing. I'm officially the worst sister. She just... She just told me you never lie. Oh, Lord, if only she knew. We step inside the auspiciously empty house. Say, just how many red dresses do you have? Or are you stealing last night's clothes? No sense spoiling another outfit, but I think it's high time I slip into something more comfortable. Jesse smirks mischievously. Come on, quickly, while the water's still warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She takes me by the hand into the lobby, where the water in the bathtub steams and heats the room. The mist obscures Jessie's form as she slips out of her dress and into her natural fur coat. As the fog clears, she steps gingerly into the hot tub, into the tub, scented it of lavender and jasmine flower. Her tail floats lazily out from under the water, and she strokes it gently. So, come help lather me up. Jessie waves a puffy wet bathing sponge my way. Oh my god. <laughs> Eager to accept my call to duty and begin lathering her in the sponge. The funeral scents fill the air along with the warm fog and I begin to lose all sense of rationality. I don't stop to think about what a terrible idea it is to fool around with my girlfriend with the risk of two people coming home and finding us. I suppose this might be the thumbnail. I don't know. Can I? No, I should be able to get away with this. I just keep running my fingers through Jesse's soapy mane, dipping my hand below the surface of the bath water and letting the sponge go wherever I deem necessary. She sighs and guides my hands this way and that towards every inch of her better fur. Oh, one second. Oh wow, that was a... Oh, that was a painful sneeze. Okay. Ow, my face. Ever sneeze so hard your face hurts? Okay. I pause longer than I should when she looks up and steals a kiss. Her nose feels wet against my cheek, and not from the bath. Ouch! That's cold. The water's warm. 
Maybe you should join me and warm up. The offer is tempting, I'll bet them practical, as I tried to picture how the two of us could possibly fit in such a small tub. From the corner of my eye, I think I see a shadow through the window. Oh no, I don't need another surprise visitor. If I never saw a lot of scowl of judgment ever again, I'd live a happy life. Somebody's here. No! Who could it be? When I look outside again, I don't see anyone. Maybe I'm mistaken, or nervous, or paranoid. It could have been anything. Wait, let me see what the name of these chapters are. Swing up the nest. Okay. It says bath time. Okay. Oh. All right, guys. There we go. Uh, Alarm Chan says that's enough wholesome sexiness for this episode. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.